I think the, f the first time uh, was when I was in, inside Biafra, uh, which you'd have to be now rather long in the tooth to remember, the Nigerian Civil War, and also, of course, the Nigeria-Biafra War, but I was inside Biafra, and I was approached in London by a man who later became a good friend, uh, who said, look, we, we have a problem. Um, we don't have any man in any source, in on the ground, inside the uh, encircled enclave. Um, so, uh, you know, would you help us out? Just, just tell us what's going on inside there. So I said, well, okay, okay. So what I did for the last year of the Biafran War, I was sending reports, both journalistic reports to the media um, and other reports to uh, my new friend, uh, telling him just actually all they wanted to know was the true level of the horror that was going on in there, uh, the, the thousands and thousands of dying children. I felt that was pretty controversial, but not about security, not the security of our country anyway. So I saw no harm in uh, contributing. But as you say, you were a, a correspondent then. I am old enough to remember that, and a, and a, and a good one. Um, but so there were some things that you weren't putting in a newspaper, but you were telling the security people. Yes, but, but basically what the security system wanted to know, apparently, was, um, is it true? Uh, because the Foreign Office was denying that there were any dying children, um, that they were passionate in supporting the dictatorship in Lagos. Um, and it was, oddly enough, uh, MI6 that uh, had a different viewpoint. Um, and the question then at the, at the head of government uh, conferences and, and, and COBRA committee meetings was, should we in fact continue supporting the Nigerian dictatorship in its uh, slaughter of its own people, or should we not? Should we discontinue and urge a, a ceasefire? Uh, and there was a difference of opinion, quite a few differences of opinion. There are two ministers resigned over it, Mr. Thompson and Mr. Thomas both resigned. So this was a government that was split. Uh, I was very firmly on the side of uh, uh, the advisability of a ceasefire and a peace conference to end this horror. Um, and I saw no harm, therefore, in, in confirming that the worst fears uh, of what was going on inside Biafra were absolutely true. The children were dying like flies. Eventually, the estimate, not by me, by relief organizations like the International Committee of the Red Cross, was that one million children died in there. And uh, I was in the heart of it. And that was your first foray. Then you went on to do things in uh, undercover in East Germany and in Rhodesia. I mean, you were getting to be sort of, not a full-time agent, but a, but a proper agent. Were you paid for any of this? No, of course not. Of course not. No, it, back then, uh, it was a, diff a different, uh, sort of, I think, probably a different attitude. Uh, the spirit of the age, as the Germans call it, the zeitgeist was different. The Cold War was very much on. Um, our enemy was the USSR, uh, specifically the Politburo and the KGB. Uh, they were dangerous to us. Uh, they threatened us. And so if you were asked, look, hey, uh, can you possibly see your way clear to do us a favour? Uh, it was very hard to say no. Please support Indigenous People of Biafra campaign for self-determination. We urgently need funds to do the following. To upgrade Voice of Biafra, BVI Channel 1, from internet TV and radio broadcast to world-class satellite TV and radio station. Fund is needed to finance our suit for self-determination currently at Federal High Court of Wary, as we are set to take the suit for International Court of Justice through our legal and human rights department, the Legal Human Rights Initiative. Fund is also needed to cover travel expense for our diplomatic missions to United Nations, African Union, European Union, and as well individual countries that are still sympathetic with our cause while scouting for countries that will support this noble cause. Also, fund is needed to continue our women and youth empowerment program and as well community services. All these are capital intensive. 50 million naira is urgently needed to proceed. Our ideology hinge on applying the following. Diplomacy, mass media, court process, both local and international, political means, and every other legitimate means of pursuing our right for self-determination in Nigeria and among the international community. We say no to war in Biafran land, Africa, and the world at large. We appeal to you as a concerned Biafran, sympathizer, or even as a philanthropic bystander to assist our noble cause. We assure your donations 
shall be kept confidential unless you instruct otherwise. We count on your donation, without which we cannot proceed. You can donate through our finance department, Omo Afra Indigenous Development Association. It is a body corporate with registered trustees you can really trust. Under the customary government of indigenous people of Biafra, as administered by the Supreme Council of Elders. The account name is Omo Afra Indigenous Development Association. Account number is 1771-641158. The bank is Sky Bank PLC. You can also donate through our PayPal link via our website www.ipobgovernment.org. For further inquiries, please call 080-3710-4017 or 080-3624-7812. Please add plus 234 if you are outside Nigeria. Yes, we can. Yes, we can be free. In Biafra, Africa shall rise again with the rising sun. Voice of Biafra, BBI Channel 1, giving Biafra a voice. Africa, 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 yeah. Mama Africa, we cry for peace. Africa. Nibo Quen, yo. When? No. Where's when? I got you.